Hello, uh, my name is Daniel Hakwigayo, and I'm with my friend. Uh, um, my name is Flavien Zamita. I am also with. Uh, my name is Jean Baptiste Okwisa uh, In this video, we are going to present you about the different cultures we have been making a research on, and each member of this team, you see, has worked on two different cultures and have made a research. And in this presentation, we are going to share about our findings. And in the end of this video, we shall also talk about the field log research we have been conducting about the different cultures in order to understand uh, their components, food, alcohol, like beverages, all those that are connected to the specific cultures. I myself uh, has worked on have worked on uh, tailgating party and Pennsylvania. That food. Um, to start, I'm going to start by by tailgating party. Uh, this was a party that was originated in United States. It starts back from 1800, <coughs> and the aim of this party was to bring people together for them to share food, beverages, and it is called tailgating because people brought out their household and they shared the food and the beverages in the front of their cars in the tailgate of their cars you, you see the tailgate of the car okay they brought food drinks to share there before the match could start they used to to make like a festival and share the food before the match could start the important food that was there like Food and beverages were the key components of the party because each, each family was encouraged to bring the food which was ready to be taken and the main, of the main food types which were there, they were hamburgers, hot dogs, chips, sarissa and etc. And most of, mostly alcoholic drinks were consumed in the party because people feel the mood of making fun and enjoying the match. You can ask yourself, why was this food important in the tailgating? <coughs> yes. Okay. Then most of the foods which I mentioned, which I mentioned, the hamburgers, hot dogs, well, consist of meat. And these people in tailgating value about the meat because they want to, to, to keep the festival carnival. And they enjoyed taking alcohol because they, they believed that alcohol will keep them in the mood throughout the match because they took the alcohol before uh, the match could start. And this was very important to them. Um, you can also ask yourself the traditions and the rituals that are related to, to this delegating party food. Mm. While taking all those alcohol, while taking all those food, they made like uh, a circle and they were revolving. It's like the literature that the, the, the literature they were making, revolving, moving in a circle, singing the songs which showed the spirit of, of the match. And it was traditionally for that party. Mm, also, these food and food even food tradition and rituals, they 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 reflect certain cultural values. Uh, because one of the the value that is mostly reflected is collectivism. While the people being together, they collect all their households and become one community. And this is the value that they communicate to, to people because they enjoy it like a community. All in all, this is about tailgating. Um, yeah, uh, thank you very much for sharing more information. Uh, and so, I would like to ask you a few questions for clarifying. Mm -hmm. uh, could you please uh, elaborate more about like what helped them that event, what helped uh, those people in their community, and talk about also something related to drinking alcohol. Like, why did you did they used to take alcohol in that event? Yeah, mm, one of the things that that was important was people to bring their food and their households and come in a common area and share. 
and that was very very important. I don't know if I answered it all well. Yeah. Mm, and uh, the reason why, <coughs> the reasons why they they used to take alcohol instead of taking other uh, other drinks is is because they believed that the alcohol could keep them the mood. You know when 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 finding the match, people like screaming, and they believe that if I have taken the alcohol, I will scream, I will make fun as much as possible. Okay, uh, then, uh, was it possible for people who want to play in the match also drinking the alcohol? Ah, no. This, they say this was supposed to be done by the fans. Oh, people okay. around. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I can go on with Pennsylvania Dash. Go ahead. Um, Pennsylvania Dutch is a culture of people who moved from Germany and Switzerland to America in the 17th centuries. <coughs> and these people came and settled in South Central Pennsylvania. Uh, they included Lutherans, Mennonites, and, and so on. Uh, they also had important food to them, to this specific culture. Like, uh, they include they like to eat whoop pie, like shoot, like coins and berries and many other types of food. And the economic status of a certain family could like could show the the, the food type they could eat. According to your to your economic status, you could afford a certain food and you don't afford another food. For these rich people, they used to eat labit braised in wine and has the chef. <coughs> and poor, poor people were used to taking uh, dumplings and potatoes. Yes. But with the, with the creativity, poor people were also eating lamps and wild asparagus and hackberries. Uh, these were the, the important food. And the economy, the economic status, uh, could allow people to take certain food. And they also had what we call seven sweet and seven sour. Uh, this and is like that, uh, this is like a term for them. Seven, like if they say sweet, this symbolizes the fruits: apples, mangoes, what and what. If they say sour, this include uh, onions, tomatoes, and whatever. Mm, there is. You can ask yourself, why was this food important? Like potatoes, rabbit, braised in wine, why were they important? Uh, most of the time, these people liked uh, the food which composed of bake, baked goods and fruit. And this food helped them to reflect their ancestral culture from German. As I said, they came from German. Yes. And they loved this kind of food because it works as a link for American and European people because they were from Europe and they were in USA now. So it was a mixture of people. Yeah, a mixture of people, the, the migrants. Mm, it also, it was, this kind of food is also important because it made this legend in Slovenia the tourist <coughs> because people were excited to see this kind of food. Yeah, this is all about why was this food important. And to talk about the traditions which which are associated with this Pennsylvania Dutch food, um, these people were like were similar to Amish people. They, this is another group of people. They they all share the tradition with the Amish, and the one of the the strongest tradition they had was that they could not eat processed food. They only ate natural food. The food from industries they, they never ate it. And instead of going to church on Sunday, they, they were not used to going to church, but they made in a certain family to start to, to share that food. Yes. Those are like the summary of the two traditions they were focusing on. Like not eating processed food and meeting on Sunday to share these kinds of food and socializing. Mm -hmm. mm, to talk about uh, how these food traditions and rituals are connected to, to, the, to their cultural values uh, is that the, the food which, which were taken there in, uh, on Sundays 
and other days, most of the time convey to them the values of purity, integrity, and simplicity. Yes. And they, be, they also believe the homemade food as they never took food from industries. And these are the, their values, purity, integrity, and simplicity. Yeah. Mm, if I can compare the, these two cultures, Delegate Food and Pennsylvania, uh, both, both cultures were from the United States, in America, because they were all there. And both, culture, both cultures have been modernized today. They started back in, in many years ago, but at this time they are modernized and they are still there. And all these food culture combine people together. Pennsylvania made on Sundays and they get the party made on before the match. Uh, like the difference, the difference is that Telgating is originally from America, while Pennsylvania was the immigrants from Europe, German and Switzerland, and they came in New USA. That's a difference. Um, and also it took many years to import Pennsylvania, like to to come to USA from Europe. It took it was a, like a process to make that culture stable. Uh, in short, those are the what I can say about these different cultures <coughs> and the way they influence today's world, today's food. Yes. And I'm going to give the next floor to who is going to, to, to go? Right? go next. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I really like this one for Pennsylvania. Like, yeah. uh, <coughs> they never believed in eating processed food, yeah. uh, which sometimes is not better for us <laughs> now. And so the floor is mine. Uh, welcome. And uh, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, the Trinity potlatch. Uh, first of all, when you start with potlatch, means it means uh, to give, uh, which comes from uh, the Chinook jargon on the Colombian leather and uh, for many Northwest uh, coast native people along the America and the Northwest, and including Trinity people or Turkish churches. Uh, there were many amazingly uh, important occasion uh, features of uh, speeches, dancing, singing, praying, feasting, and lavishing uh, distribution of property for the people who were like riches. The portraits were social occasions given by us, uh, by the people, by someone, <coughs> excuse me, who organized the event to establish or uphold his status <coughs> or position in the society. Uh, basically, they were given high ranking members to the villages uh, to celebrate publicly remarkable events such as a new baby, uh, Sony's marriage, house dedication, uh, child bath, and so many of them, like taking another time. There were so many events. And additional portraits are. Uh, were also uh, the venue in which ownership to the economic uh, and ceremonial privileges were accepted and displayed and formally transferred to their heirs. If I have a boy, for instance, and I'm so old, and uh, I want to give him my property, for instance, to live him in his hands, and so I organized a pot, a pot, Trinity portrait as a way also to give him or to show others that is the one who is going to replace me. And also they, they used to do this event also if just for honoring the deed. When there was a little person, a portrait is, was the culmination of series on the rituals and ceremonies of custom this, that was dictate, dictated to a work and cremination, post cremination feast and all ceremonies or stuff to strengthen alliance between uh, the clan of deceased and the moisty opposite, I mean like the living spouse uh, lineage for that, that person. And the opposites were in charge of uh, body preparation and, pre and funeral cremation. And when a living person was from a, a high class individual, the living spouse lineage had to rebuild his home and refurbish it. And so about the guests that uh, were supposed to attend uh, the Trinity portrait, there was a list who had to attend the portrait included lineage and Related lineage of the deceased and the windows lineage and guest runs usually from another village. Here, I mean, when it is about like honoring the dead. And so, mm, again, during uh, uh, 
surrogate uh, reports that are story when it's <coughs> not about handling the deal, uh, when it's about an event for like uh, a new baby and that uh, for just that uh, put people for happiness. There was there were also a uh, <coughs> context, and within this they prepared enough uh, delicious food uh, that the best had to eat until when they feel that they are satisfied, till to the peak where they feel like they are, they are done and they were dancing and singing for the men who were satisfied like to say like uh, to show that they are satisfied and Protrash was hosted with visiting clients uh, from Wango and Stikta in attendance and they had to do an eating contest that was held uh, between equal numbers of men from each visiting clan and then uh, the Wangwa team uh, ate from all horror hot dog while the Stikta group uh, tackled a huge sprouts fruit basket uh, called the mother of baskets. You understand if this mother of baskets was the biggest one. Mm -hmm. And Rangwa team was victorious but only through trickery. And sometimes uh, there were more effects. People were killed unintentionally when they served the cranberries, cranberries dried the hemlock back and oil. And the host had to pay like victims plant several serves in compensation. Like sometimes depending on the food that they were served, they will the accidents could occur and then the host of the event had to pay uh, the, the, that clan that lose the person but into like uh, stress and then what how you can ask yourself what are the foods that were served there now the foods that were served uh, at the portraits varied seasonally depending on time including fish or seal meat uh, along with uh, seal oil in which all food was uh, dipped, and the good host was uh, expected to provide more food than his guest and uh, could possibly eat as much as possible to satisfy them. There were stories uh, about guests becoming physically ill from overeating to help them to stay fresh and uh, feel happy even though they are oversatisfied. Usually guests were also given food uh, to take home and share with others, thus spreading the word of the words of host generosity. You understand that this event uh, helped uh, them uh, to stay united uh, together and uh, sharing happiness, and also uh, help them for like uh, giving each other, like, leaving uh, like something behind that others will remain, uh, will, will, will others who are remaining will be remembering to you. And so that's that's about the Trinity Potlatch. If you have any question, you can ask before I proceed. Yeah, I think it is no question. Yep. Yeah. Uh, thank you. If you have no question, that really shows that you have really understood. Uh, let me go next with uh, Japanese rice. Um, in Japan, rice is their daily life. Right? It's what they live in. It's their culture. It's no longer food. It's like now they take into a context of family and in this sense to their life and when you do not have rice as a Japanese it's like uh, it's almost you did not eat that's the way they believe sure. okay. yeah and they use it as gohan gohan is a Japanese uh, which Japanese language meaning cooked rice and food and which shows that food is fully completed when it is with rice Mm -hmm. Lice is used in all things for Japanese and can be taken as snacks for them. You understand, like taking lice as snacks. Mm -hmm. And uh, due to that, uh, wet lice uh, cultivation was a rather intensive task uh, uh, before that could not be accomplished easily by everyone. And families put their energy together uh, and shared the rubber water resources and irrigation facilities so that everyone will have access to rice, which helped them to develop like li helping rice as their culture. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things. And um, rice is prepared differently. You can uh, ask how it can be prepared, but it varies. Rice is prepared like dry, fluffy, and easier for the uninitiated to eat with chopsticks, like they're, they're like those forks for Japanese, mm -hmm. for two sticks only, yeah. And they prepare it from Japanese rice balls to a sushi rice recipe. Mm -hmm. And so, rice are pretty different uh, law for Japanese. The Western Soviet the rice is their culture, face to four, and uh, they took like some nouns uh, 
which shows that it's their culture. Like they may give, they add like prefixes to Gohan, and which give like a, a name for a sarogan, which means a breakfast, mm -hmm. like hirugan, which means lunch, and bangogan, which means dinner. You understand that? So nowadays I'm speaking uh, in Japanese, <laughs> and this really shows that meal they had to take had to come with lies. Then moreover, the indigenous name of Japan, Mizu, Hono, Honokuni, which means like it means like the land of the water stock of plant or lice, which means like the their previous name for from the recent years showed that also it's a place where you can find lice. And this really shows that it's their culture. And from their past history, rice was a great significance of Japanese where the king hungered lies much more and it was like the cornerstone of the country's wealth and they liked uh, to use lies and products from it in many royal activities, coronation and other various. Currently lies is still the base of the country wealth where almost 90% of the population are engaged in lies cultivation. You understand like they value most rice and it's their life. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much also. Uh, uh, you may welcome questions regarding this. Is there any similarity between Japanese lice and Tim Tim Tlingi pot lice? Yeah, that's what uh, I wanted to come back to. Yeah. Yes, about the similarities, uh, it's because where, where it's like a fruit and other ones are different, they seem to be somehow uh, different, but it's, it's uh, to, based on the similarities, it's like they both do these activities where the lice and Trinity potlatch for just to keep them as unit mm -hmm. to united together because lice is for Japanese it's their culture and they believe that when you have lice that's where you have life and they help each other as I said so that everyone can have access which means like help them to stay united and um that's all about and the other different the other similarities just they all symbolize uh, culture values that they based on. That's about the similarities. About the differences that uh, it's uh, they took place in different areas, north, east, west, for Trinity Potlatch, <coughs> but here it's in Japan. And also like uh, for Trinity Potlatch, uh, we did not see where like they used to take lights like this one for Japanese, which is different to others. And for this lights is country's wealth. Yes, okay. simply not so about. <gasps> Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. You're mm -hmm. welcome. Okay, uh, as you have already done the, your part, so I'm going also to discuss about the Hawaiian boy and the Hindu wedding food. Okay. So, uh, starting from the Hawaiian boy, uh, the, the Hawaiian boy was uh, a kind of uh, preparation that he, we are prepared with people for, from Hawaii where they were to prepare like breakfast <coughs> or something uh, they found uh, the root of uh, a tree the, some plants they will use to plant and then uh, we find like they want to like to a taro root there is what the tree called the taro mm -hmm. so it is found in the, their country and they really vary it in their culture uh, they mix this with water then they want to make it smoother they, they, they mix it it become like porridge Mm. or like yogurt yeah. so uh, when they are making this mostly uh, this uh, it is popular food from traditional because they, 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 it, it, they adopt the indigenous people of Hawaii uh, if, for instance this there is iron of Oresia where they really value this 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 uh, Hawaiian poi so the poi is really is like a, a stretch of root which is grown uh, in many Pacific islands. When you go in those areas, you find this. It is really known by many people. So uh, this is mostly uh, in their context. They use it as as just to associate themselves with uh, what we call Hanoa, uh, so which is the god who represent the original ancestors. Uh -huh. So most of most most of the time when they use this, they just like. Uh, giving credit to Haroa, which is the god <coughs> of their ancestors. Most of this is the really, the really what is 
behind of the, the, the culture which is behind this poll. Because most of people they use uh, just to get, they even call it appetizer. Because once they use it, they get appetite to eat. Because it has some vitamins, calcium, potassium, and some a, vitamin A, B, and C. So when they eat it, they really find that like you find someone has appetite to even to eat other things. Most of the time, they use it in breakfast. So uh, this is uh, if I tell you the way they prepare this, it is just something simple. Even you can prepare when you have all the, the materials. Just something to place a boy in the vast boil. Yeah. You have to mix it with hand, just using hands. After using, then mix with, we add some water. After adding water, you start now adding water regularly as you desire. Because you find it is like being stuck, then you can add water to make it soft. Then you can also put it in the fridge so that it can, it can also be cool. After you can wait like for 20 minutes, you can bake it. Then you, you put for 20 minutes, mm -hmm. you just to steam it. Mm -hmm. Then after there, you can move and you add some water to mix until you find uh, the way, the design that you, you really desire mm -hmm. to have it. Okay. So uh, most of the time, this was very important for <coughs> having like credit of their uh, God's ancestors. Because if they want to remember them, they just make a point, then they start remembering their ancestors also for appetizing. Then going to Hindu wedding food, mm -hmm. uh, is there any question first before I proceed for the Hindu wedding? Yes, yes. I, I have yes. got a small question. Oh, okay. Can you elaborate more about the, the importance of tallow plant in the Hawaiian poi? Uh, actually, this plant. Uh, the way you look at it, they don't talk much about it. What they talk much is about what comes from the it root, the root of tau. Because okay. it is yeah, it is the one which they use to the the, the the raw material to use when you're making a poi. Okay. So most of the time the tree is not considered but the root because okay. the one which they use to make that poi. Okay. So is there any any question per se like okay. Uh, talking about Hindu wedding food, uh, most of, you know Hindu wedding food is different, are quite different from other wedding, because this is a wedding which can take longer, it can take even several days. Where you find uh, the the preparation is like they prepare a place, it will take place outside the house in the canopy, some the in the, in the tent like that. Yes. So they prepare seat for people, the guests who will come, then. When you are there, you are not, you are not uh, told to be in one place. You can walk as you walk around, just talking with someone. Uh, so there are some refreshment around. You can pick a snack. You just chew as you are walking, talking with your your friend. So it's quite different. If you when you look at other weddings, people sit down and they wait for the the schedule or the program that uh, the way it is designed. But here it is different. You can start today, tomorrow, next day. Like, People are there, you can walk around in the ceremony, you pick a refreshment as, as you are moving. So, uh, this has a cultural context with this food. Because most of the time, uh, there are some things that you use in this wedding, and the, each, each, each one has the meaning which is praising praise in, this, this, in this wedding. Uh, for instance, I can talk about the coconut. Uh, coconut in this wedding, is, is a, a symbol of prosperity where they they take a, a, a coconut they place it in the bride's hands then the father hold the hands of the bride and then they press it at the groom's hands so this is like uh, they are like giving prosperity to that person so this is what they use mostly just when they are like wishing prosperity to the to the groom and the, and the bride. So uh, another thing that they use is the paste of chumi, seed, and brown sugar. <coughs> Most of the time, chumi is, is bitter, and sugar, you know, sugar is sweet. Mm -hmm. So when they use this in the wedding ceremony, mm -hmm. they mix them. Then they just paste, they put in the, hand, the the face of the bride and the groom. Mm -hmm. So this is they. And you know when the priest is 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 just uh, 
reciting the, the Vedic mantras, what the expressions which they use when they are, they are, they are making wedding. Mm -hmm. So they just fix those leaves at, at the front side of the those the bread and the groom. Mm -hmm. And as the, the, the leaves is, is, is bitter and the, the sugar is sweet, this means that in the life, there are two things, the sweetness and the bitterness. <laughs> you have to, to dwell with those, those two things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, like, if you are putting that, everybody knows that in this journey that you are starting, there are two things that you have to bear with. Mm -hmm. First of all is bitterness, then sweetness. Mm -hmm. So, this is like, the, the, the paste of cumin seed and brown sugar is just representing the bitterness and sweetness in your life. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, the last thing that you can talk about Hindu wedding food, uh, this is rice. Mm. Rice in this ceremony play a great role. So you can ask yourself, what is it? Most of the time, it, in the other weddings, they use it, mm. but with different meaning. Mm. There are some who use it just like they, they are throwing to the, to the bride, just to as cheering and showing them that they are happy to be happy with them. But in this Hindu tradition, it is representing blessing from it is just blessing mm. because uh, where they, they can say there is strong health and uh, for for you you feel like you have a strong health. Mm. For instance, when you, uh, there is a picture that uh, uh, what I saw when I was making this research, mm -hmm. where there is a groom and a bride. Mm -hmm. They are just everybody has rice and is speaking and is throwing on someone. Yeah. So the reason <coughs> is yeah. in the family yeah. there is there's one thing you have to know. There's someone who's supposed to dominate. So they give rice in the same quantity, then you start throwing to each other. Then the one who finishes it first, this will be dominating the family. Okay. So this is what they mean in their tradition. So uh, this is very important, because as you hear that when they are doing this, they know what is going to happen, and they know what is going, what is symbolizing in their in their life. So uh, comparing this uh, this these two cultures, the Hawaiian poi and the Hindu wedding food, all of them they are representing something in their cultures, which means they are have they having traditional meaning in their cultures, which is really important to the, the cultures. Also, uh, most of them, they, they can be also eaten, eatable. Yeah. They consume them mm. for a certain purpose. Mm. Maybe uh, for the difference, the poi can be consumed just when it is breakfast mm -hmm. or as a dessert after eating your food, you think I'm going to add on this. Okay. Then uh, others just consumed, others are used as another for other purpose like rice. Sometimes they eat, but they also throw on someone to, to show this. Coconut can be also eaten, but they also use it to, to, to show prosperity. Mm -hmm. Then I think uh, this is enough. Uh, is there any question if I uh, know? Uh, what I wanted to ask you yes. already ended up with it. And Thank you very much. You gave us like clear meaning about Hindu. It's really more understandable. Okay. Daniel, do you have anything to add on? Or I, have, to ask I, I, can, I can see these cultures are somehow similar. I have heard of lice in Hindu and culture and in the lice in Japan. Yes. You, you understand? You there understand are some similarities. They are similar like, to the value of lice, for instance, in Japan, mm -hmm. and also to the value of lice. In Hindu, you yeah. understand like they are all cultural, cultural values in oh. their life. Yes, and please value the food because it's uh, like yeah, it's something thing. important. Yes. Like most of people they are united with food, so people should also consider that. Okay, uh, to go on with our presentation, we are going to also talk about the research we have been making. You have been uh, making a field work research in different areas, in different cultures. And I myself, I have worked on the research last week. Last week, the last Saturday, I went to a certain community there in Matuali. You know, I think you know the place. Oh. And the the salmon was called Umhango Kurja Urunyano. This is a local language. 
Uh, that means baby baby ceremony. Yes. Mm, I had like I had an invitation. As you can see, the picture shows that. Mm, I had an invitation where there was a ceremony when I went there. I was warmly welcomed. And one of the old men there, who, who is called Lukazamyandi, uh, well, <laughs> yeah, that's that. a local name. Oh, yeah, I yeah. Welcomed me very well <coughs> and informed me that they were about to date a child. Actually, in Rwanda, when they are going to name a child, it's it's a ceremony. It's a, a traditional ceremony. They have traditions they follow and many things. And when I went there, I found many people, like children, other women, old people who were all there surrounding in the company, in the compound there. And the newborn baby with his his brother were there. And like women were apart preparing some food for, for people and the 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 old men were just drinking local beer there. And I was also among those they they, they considered me as an old man a, a visitor. I knew you and we are drinking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come, okay. I I even tested the yeah. Yeah. And afterwards the one of the chief of the family stood up and welcomed the people and they started the ceremony. It was a kind of ritual because all all, all the things were like prepared. They started by uh, allowing each and every person who was there to give a name to a newborn baby. And then they started from children. Children started naming. And after they did, they were given like the trees, uh, if I can call the wood, woods which, are, which will have the form like a hoop. And they went, they pretended that they were, they were digging and we made it through water on those children, telling them you are done. Yeah. Then after each person has given the name to a newborn baby, then the Solomon went on and they brought uh, like, like a very big <coughs> bait <coughs> where they, they were like lounge of food and I approached one of the one of the old men there and asked them, what kind of this food and they called they told me this is called Uriano and it is in the land to to symbolize the fires, the waste of a newborn baby. Yeah. And his children were enjoying that 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 food, shelling together on that big plate and, and the large plate. And old people were kept drinking that beer. And the ceremony went on after we had taken that food, that meal, then it was the, the turn for the parents to name a child. And most of the time the name from the parents are the one are the ones which are considered in that ceremony. And after naming the child by the parents, mm, the parents of that parent, of those people there, who had gone uh, who had got a newborn baby, they brought them you can see the picture here. They brought them um, hooves, they brought them basins and sorghum, uh, which was very interesting. But after <coughs> the, after the party, I had I, I had many questions. <coughs> I wanted to ask to ask yes. people there to get more information, to get more factual information. And one of the questions that I answered, I asked, when do you normally do this kind of ceremony? And then Lucas Amyambi told me, this is known as Kuriki Unyano, and it is done every time when you are going to name a newborn baby. They had to make that ceremony. And I also called, asked the head, what do you call this event Kuriki Unyano? And he said, we call this event like that because the allowed food mixture stands for the newborn baby faces, oh. uh, which symbolize that the newborn baby is healthy. Okay. Yeah, is healthy. And the one last question I ask him is that why did you send the children to dig as they pretended that they were digging? And they say this is the symbol for their future laws because uh, it is done to make them familiar with their future career, which is agriculture to, yes. to Rwanda. 
Okay, in short, uh, this was how was the, the field vlog I conducted. I enjoyed it very much and it was more cultural with different uh, activities which are more traditional. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Nice. Okay. Okay. I got new things from you. Yeah. Yeah. Which I did not know about the reason why they do like that. I yeah. just <laughs> used to see, but I could not realize that this is the real meaning. So, yeah. but from today I can really know yes. what is. Okay, so just can you go oh, on? Uh, let me proceed. Uh, personally, of the Muganurante in Rwanda, it's somehow similar to Thanksgiving, for instance, in the United States, or like. When you translate it, uh, depending on its intention, it's how they seem bad because it's a day when like Rwandans from different parts of the country meet and then they appreciate uh, like the harvest that they got from cultivating. Uh, for me, so Rwandans, they used to share with friends, uh, neighbors, family, school, just thinking uh, for the harvest they got from agriculture. And Umaganura Day, as I told you, is compared as harvesting day in other countries. And so it is organized in families where like have families that have listened more and they and wish to share with their friends and neighbors, families, and also give seeds to others so that next time also they have harvest more. That's the reason. And the whole family prepared traditional food to share with others, mostly including maize and prepare like what is called uh, sogam juice, which is called ushera, and then for drinking. Now, just Ushera is just non alcoholic and was mostly prepared for, uh, in, as in it was taken by people who do not take alcohol. Mm -hmm. But for uh, some areas for people who take alcohol, they used to call to take Rubawa mm -hmm. or Chigaje. And this, uh, this culture is done in families, and for the whole river of the country, is done on, is celebrated on 5th August. Oh. Yeah. Which means even the okay. Yes. And so, um, last weekend I got chances uh, to experience this event and to look how it went and I attended one event in the southern province of Rwanda and then uh, the family that was in the, the order of the family uh, invited people from different areas, uh, neighbors, family, relationships and also like friends from outside and also some of his employees from like the agriculture plant and then uh, they prepared cooked maize so that everyone had to eat them but uh, they were so abundant let me say like that mm -hmm. and apart from maize they prepared big as i told you and during the event like they invited like the father of the family family representative in case uh, like uh, it is a widow who, there is a widow that mean like the husband has died and has to welcome uh, uh, the guest and say the welcoming speech. Yeah, it's different. Like when it's a family that has only mother without father, that there is a male representative of the family, maybe from the close relationship, but that woman do, is not a representative. And then um, after taking like a welcoming, saying a welcoming speech, <coughs> and then he had to say like. I thank these people for helping me to get this and this, this and this, and here are all the reasons <coughs> for thanking them. After that, he had to give them like a warm welcome and tell them, uh, "You are free here. You are free to eat whatever, whatever food is here." And then they started sharing till to when they feel like they are satisfied. Like um, when people were satisfied, uh, there was other the way they drank uh, They met on one pot, uh, like four people within one straw and then just for showing that this really symbolized that uh, they are united they can share everything even whatever small or big that's like uh, the family order that <coughs> told me the reason for that sharing on the same uh, on the same straw and uh, when people are satisfied they invite her to give like a closing speech to the invitees and give some uh, from his harvest to people who attended to go and give those ones who made home like maize <coughs> and put some mushera in if there are bottles to go to take them home. And so when the event <coughs> excuse me, when the event was done and I have many careers and questions that I wish to ask. 
And some of the questions that I asked uh, a person named X because uh, he did not wish that I can like use his name. He thought that I was going to use it for another purpose, but for his concern, I respected him. <coughs> I asked him why the Rwandans do this activity. He told me that Rwandans use this activity for thinking. <coughs> A lot from the harvest they got and share with families they become united and give seeds to others so that for the next time also they will, others will get more benefit or more harvest and increase friendship mm. as, as again if there is another drink that might be taken during this event basically he told me that to share is done that is more preferred as many you can find that people do not take alcohol can take it <coughs> and even those ones who take alcohol but also he told me that they can take <coughs> Ichigaje for those ones who like alcohol. Okay. I asked him, like the last question that I asked him is, all this symbolizes in one culture? <coughs> he told me that it symbolizes good health and good nutrition. If you have, you eat nice, you have good uh, health and you eat well. Simply, that's all about the few questions that I had to ask him. And he, told, he added that, that, that food is from their ancestors, from ancestors. Mm -hmm. and so as the attendee of the event i recognize that rwandans very friendship and respect their traditional foods <coughs> they invite each other share the, the harvest <coughs> and help the, each other so that everyone can uh, benefit and this symbolizes the recognition of harvest as the way to increase friendship and meeting with others simply okay thank you very much Thank you too. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jean Baptiste. <coughs> I, really you too, I really appreciate because most of the things that you've been tackling in your in your research they are like similar but in a different ceremony. Yeah. Yes. But they are using this in the, also they are, they are using the same. For instance, <coughs> I made a research on Musaonobu Kwa Mutonya Kwana, which means uh, bride, bridal introduction and dowry giving in Rwandan culture. Okay. So uh, most of, 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 of the time, the, the Rwandan wedding ceremony is, is look like same of these African African countries. Some mm -hmm. because they just uh, have a, a small difference. Maybe you can say like that. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a wedding which take two has two phases. Mm -hmm. The first phase is this giving production uh, <coughs> and the dowry giving. Then also there is another wedding which you call a uh, civil wedding or church because yes. the first of all which has to be considered the first in Rwandan culture is introduction and giving dowry. This is the one which I consider. So most of the the, the, when we, the purpose of this in this ceremony is to, to introduce the family of groom officially and pay officially the dowry. Mm -hmm. This is the first purpose because mm -hmm. A boy goes uh, on the side and he gets in love with a, 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 a girl. Mm -hmm. The family does not know each other. Mm -hmm. Only those two who know each other. Then this is the time now when they are going to, <coughs> to, to introduce. This is the family from the bride. This is the family from the groom. Then they join together. Then they know each other officially. Okay, they can know each other before, but they in that kind is where they know that this, this is going to be getting married with this one. Uh, then they pay officially the dowry because they don't just pay on check on bank what they have to pay and even speak in that. <coughs> so actually, uh, when this this time it is now uh, where I attended one ceremony, then I wanted to know really how it goes on. Mm -hmm. That's where I found a press which was well prepared with many things traditional like mud. You find grasses, dry grasses, mm. uh, uh, just around down at the ground, and then you find they have put some bamboo sticks at the entrance. Even there are bananas trees which is planted at the entrance. Then you find everything is like, what is this? Yeah. So I, I attended one wedding as I said. Then uh, there were two elders <coughs> in that wedding. I saw one stood up. Then he was talking like. Is, a, is talking is like making a poem. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then I was wondering, what is this? When he's saying, then I asked myself, what is wrong? 
then I, I was like crossed. Mm. Then he could stop after talking another elder from from one side. Because when the, the families were there, they were not sitting in on one side. Mm. The family of the bride was sitting on this side, then for the groom on the other side, facing each other. Mm. Then other people were sitting in the middle, others are mixed like this. But what was surprised that the family of the boys here, the family of the girls here, they are facing each other. Mm. Then the elders are standing in the middle. Mm. Discussing the, the conversation, sharing the conversation. One is talking, then this is talking. So it, they were using the one of these rams, what mm. they call in the mm. So it was something amazing, because to see it, it was uh, interesting. Then uh, at that time, they were having some drinks, and this was, uh, there, there was a, a big pot. As you also mentioned, New York Research, you yes. find it. And then they, was, they were having a big straw, <coughs> wrong straw, yeah. they were using to drink. Yeah. Then the elder from this side comes and drink. Then they were, what they were drinking, it was Uruguaba. Okay. Uruguaba, this is local traditional beer, yeah. which is made in banana, mixed with yeah. sorghum, but, sorghum, but which were, they were fried, and then they make a, a powder. They put in that banana, then they keep it for maybe two days. Then after two days, they remove from there, then put in that pot. Mm -hmm. So they were drinking. Then asked, them, what, what, why are they drinking now? It is a sign, a symbol of doing what of welcoming the guests. Mm -hmm. They were like welcoming that, that family, in that in the, the family of the the bride to the family of the groom. Mm -hmm. Then. Uh, the ceremony went like that, we were just sharing conversation, they also brought food, but what I saw, drink was the first one which was really appearing, because all the session, they were like sharing the calabash of beer, then giving to this person, <laughs> then drinking, so sharing like that. Yes. Then I approached one, one, uh, one man who was there, his, the, his name is Juvenile, he was hearing. Okay. Then I asked him, could you please, answer me some question that I have. Then he told me, it's okay, I can answer. Then he, I asked him, what does Nzoga or Guam or Banana Beer means or represent or symbolize me sweating? Mm. He simply said, it is the place we come with the guest and the, with high joy. Mm. And when you see drinking from a pot with, 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 in the circle, with this represent unity. So they are like joining the families together. The families of the bride, the families of the group together. So they come and surround the pot, mm -hmm. then they drink. Even they were using one straw, that was that's amazing. And they could understand, I really not understand what <coughs> Then uh, I said, this is now what we what, what show George will come or join these people together. This is the reason why this pot is like this. Because the pot has no limit. It is like a circle. The circle has no, no, no boundary. Mm -hmm. So they were like joining each other. Mm -hmm. Then I asked, is it mandatory to use banana beer? This this one. Mm -hmm. Then I asked, I asked also why. He said no. The reason is there are some families which are Christian, born again, mm -hmm. and the Muslims they don't drink <laughs> beer. For, for them they can use soda. Yeah, yes. They can also use banana juice, which yes. is not kept yeah. stuff for oh, some years. Sure. But they call it Uruguay or beer because. The beer name has the from the the, the origination from what is ancestors. They were using it. So even though it is soda, even though it is the what you have to say what, even though it is tea, yes. you have to say it is in Zoga or Ugwa, yeah. the beer. Because okay. it is symbolizing mm -hmm. the culture of what is something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I asked another question. When that event, when the event was approaching at the end, I saw some the elders sharing the, the, the that that the tomb. They asked, "Why we are there sharing this?" Then he says, uh, "Actually, when as we, I told you that giving a beer, drinking beer was a sign of welcoming guests. Also, it is another another sign of saying bye to the guests and telling them to come back." And we are calling it Akago Kazagaruka, which means the beer of welcoming again. So I, I said that's what that was the reason. That, yeah, I said that this is the reason because when the event is starting, they have to welcome the, the guests with beer. Yes. And also they say bye to them with beer and uh -huh. tell them to come back. There's another beer they give. They say you have to give them the 
be of wake up back. So, mm -hmm. they, you know, uh, the family comes to them, they will also keep coming. Mm -hmm. So, to open, uh, to open the gates, if they give them that beer, then they will be knowing that we are free in this family, anytime we want, you can come back. So, from there, I, uh, I came to know that beer or Uguabu has a great meaning in Rwandan culture, mm -hmm. mostly in the wedding, mm -hmm. giving dowry and introduction, something like that. Because <coughs> they were using it, whether you are from which denomination, from which church, you have to say Uguabu, Zoga, beer, something like that. Mm -hmm. we, yeah, it is not beer. So, this shows that beer has a great meaning in the Rwandan culture, mostly in the wedding and this, this wedding. So this was the research event, and I really I enjoyed the research because I was also trying to express on that those drinks and eating those feeds. So really, I, I enjoyed the sermon, and even we wish also to attend more sermons, more than one. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Fabio. Okay. By the way, you deserve kudos. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> for you. Thank you very much for sharing this. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this uh, is the research that you've been making. It was a very interesting experience to go to the field, talk with people, and we have made a research on different cultures from local and even outside Africa. And we have seen that, one common thing we have seen that uh, food and beverages are the key components of, the, of each culture we have made a research on because they play very important roles in the traditions and rituals and it shows that food <coughs> and beverages should be valued in the culture and this is the end of our presentation is there anything you would like to add no, I just i think there is nothing because yeah. most of things have been stuck yeah. on them uh, yeah uh, thank you very much for your uh, attention this is the end of our presentation. Thank ah, you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for being with me and your attention. Thank you very much.